by the uh, by the Germans there. There's some Germans in the far field as well, and they're moving behind the uh, behind the tree line there, using them as cover. They know the terrain, and they've caught the Americans rather out in the open, which is bad for the Americans. Now, as we said, this is the American sector, and our German paratroopers have uh, rather caught the. Uh, rather caught our Americans in, in, a, in, a, in a spot and if they don't get any help soon they're going to die because there's nowhere for them to go they're actually pinned down in fact there's a wound in the middle of the field ladies and gentlemen we have some visitors to the field it looks like the firing has been heard from the adjacent centre and here come ladies and gentlemen the British Army Yay! So here we are, the British Tommy, as you can see, the British Tommy is armed with some very simple weapons. He came in fact with, armed with the Lee Enfield rifle, the same rifle he used during the First World War. He came very heavily trained, and like the Americans, these boys have been at war now for several years. He came with a stun gun, you can hear the stun guns rattling away there. Now the stun gun had actually been developed to be the most simple mass-produced submachine gun ever. The reason for this is we sent copies of this all over the world. It was that simple. We even sent an instruction manual on how to make one in a shed. For the resistance is all over the world. The weapon that's absolutely definitive. You can see it. Its profile is very, very definitive with the side-mounted magazine. You can see the paratrooper there found that uh, American that was creeping up on him and he's dispatched him with a baby, I think. But the British, you see, here are highly trained. Unlike the Americans, they didn't go marching forward. They formed straight into an orderly fighting line. And they're using the Leon fields to lay suppressive fire down on the Germans, causing the Germans to have to back off. What they've actually managed to do there, ladies and gentlemen, is they've actually managed to fight the Americans. So the Americans can now make it safe to defilade. So it looks like our American allies are now rejoining the fight. You see there, the German army, which was quite well equipped, is using smoke to uh, hide its cover, uh, hide, hide its uh, numbers and uh, go to defilade. Our uh, British Army motorcyclist here is right on his motorcycle. You see, he's brought his stun gun with him because the stun gun lives on a cliff on the bike. Dispatch riders of this sort were absolutely vital, absolutely vital in France. You couldn't tell where anybody was and if messages needed to be sent from one place to another or maps needed to be sent from one place to another, one place to another then the dispatch rider was the man to do it. If you needed to find out where a unit was or what unit was in a situation, you could send this guy and he was eyes on the ground. So dispatch riders, even in the age of radios, this dispatch rider, in fact he's checking his map here, he's got the map here, because he was in the adjacent sector. So he will make sure that even if this goes horribly wrong, then at least all the messages get back. It looks to me like they forced the, uh, like they forced the Germans back. You can see the German there trying to get back into the Kubel wagon to get a motorised escape. Now, like the professionals that they are, the British Army, you see them moving one at a time, and as one moves, one fires. There you go, they're always covering each other. As I say, they've been at war for years. The British Army was pretty much, you know, a British service we were going to have to serve the entire war. Where the Americans did tours of duty, the British service would serve for the entire duration. After all, the British Islands were at one time threatened. After D-Day, of course, the, uh, the Germans uh, were fooled because the uh, Americans, uh, sorry, the British intelligence under a man called Garbo had managed very successfully to fool the Germans into thinking that we were going to a place called the Port de Calais. We never went there. We, in fact, the dummy landing at Normandy, which the Germans thought was a dummy, was the real thing. We time we realised they were pinned down by air, for air power and they were late. The British and the Americans got their bridgeheads. And beyond that point, it all began to go a little wrong for the Allies, and they couldn't break out. The Germans moved armoury to crush the uh, Canadian and British positions. And just at that point, the Americans did something which only the Americans can do. They bombed a three-mile road and drove down it and into France. And all of a sudden, the Germans discovered that the Americans had actually got 30 miles inland and were encroaching on their flank. So. Good grace to the Americans, when it comes to driving, they're good at that, and they pretty much saved D-Day. There's not many uh, Germans left now. You can see they've actually reached the first Kubelwagen, and they've uh, 
managed to dispatch the crew in there and now they're reaching the point where they've now got cover and the Germans are fighting not people in the open but people in the cover and out they come because they know that these people are going to hunt them down they know that they're dealing with the British they know that they can't get away because they can't get there and that's it ladies and gentlemen oh no there's one still over by the Kubelwag he's going to try and make his escape now I think Yeah, he might be too far away. He might get away. We'll see. The, the day has been... Uh, you can hear the last of the firing. The problem with these automatic weapons is the rate of fire is very high, but the ammunitions were generally uh, pistol-sized pistol ammunitions. These are super machine gun ammunitions. He's only pistol ammunition, and his rate is very short. So in open battlefield, it's not hellishly useful. Whereas the battle rifles had a range of a mile, but their rate of fire wasn't that good accurately because they were bolt action. Only the Americans could bring uh, semi-automatic rifles that were quicker firing. But the ammunition was still too heavy. And as our last German makes his way, he's trying to find his way out of the, uh, out of the tree line. And as he's, uh, as he's doing that, the British now pretty much professionally mopping up. You see, they never ever just charge him. They're not like the Americans. They are, they've been at this for a while and they've got him. They've surrounded him. You can see him 